Hey, and welcome to Tech Tips with Sold Out Media. Amanda. And I'm Linus. And we have Jake downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> so today we're going to talk a little bit broadcasty stuff, uh, but we're also going to go over into regular ENG or DSLR editing. The whole topic today, white balance, yep. color correction, right? So this is, this is a multi-camera broadcast studio. We have a mixer board here. You can pick what camera's live. Up here's our program and our preview. And we got four cameras downstairs, Sony HXC70s, very nice cameras. Yeah. And these are the remotes camera, for them. The, yeah, the camera. These are not CCUs, these are remotes. Yeah, they're the remotes for the CCUs that are that way. Yeah, the, the CCUs are camera control units. The remotes for the CCUs uh, you, you can use to control the CCUs and ultimately control the camera. Yeah. So white balance, black balance, and your broadcast levels. For us, that's so important. You guys, a lot of people, when you're editing your stuff back home, you're doing it in post-production. Yeah. But when we do this here, we're doing it live. So we have to make sure that our levels hit legal broadcast levels. It has to be right before you go live. Because it's like we're doing the post-production, pre-production. Right, exactly. So IRE is a, is a term or a unit that we use to measure the amount of light coming in, the iris in a broadcast. You have IRE in your scopes and final cut in Adobe Premiere. Yeah. Uh, but we use IRE here in a little bit of a different way. We use it to actually set the bottom level for the black and the top level for the white, which you do in editing too. Yeah. We have Jake down in the studio and you can see in the picture, he's completely overexposed, right? Yeah, doesn't look very good. No, and if Linus slips through the cameras, the, the white balance isn't too different between the cameras, but they're all overexposed. So the first oh. step, <laughs> <laughs> nice. the first step that you do uh, when you're preparing for a broadcast is actually set your black balance level. Nice. There we go. So you can see here on this scope that my bottom level is at zero IRE, uh, 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 but my actual picture is probably at 10 or 15 IRE for the bottom level. And you can see up here, there's a red line that shows that my, my picture is actually going above 100 IRE. Uh, yeah. In fact, in this one here, I've set the scope to give you a warning at 97 IRE. So I know that that line there is 97. Oh. As broadcasters, we want to give a little, little bit of room, not a lot of room, but a little bit of room for lights that might peak in the background. So for starters, the very first thing you want to do is go to black. Because if you don't set the black level correctly, the white level will never be right. No. So if we lower that all the way down. Goodbye, Jake. Right? You can <laughs> see my, my black line is still a little bit above the zero line. I could set my black to total black. But depending on your camera, uh, it, it, you might want to be a little bit of flexible in this. I find that Sony's need a little bit of extra buffer mm -hmm. so that the blacks don't look too crushed. Yeah. Now, for example, if I, I lower the black level too much and then I bring the iris back up, but not to, not to overexposed. So this is with my black level really, really low, below zero you can see that picture doesn't look right. And even if I bring it up just a little tiny bit, you can see that Jake looks muddy in the picture, right? That's because the black levels aren't right. Exactly, right? You, likewise, even if I'm underexposed, so you see I have my IRE below peaking. There's one little highlight in the background, probably these candles. I think it's the cups actually. Oh, the cups, yeah, yeah. that are highlighting. white porcelain. But if you look at, look at Jake, even if I bring my black level uh, or my iris up to the right level rather, and the black level is not quite right, you can see it's hard to get focus on him. Yeah. There you go. Zoom all the way in. Focus on his eyes. Even though he's in focus, he doesn't look as sharp as he could be. That all has to do with the black level, the master black being not quite right. The other aspect of black to talk about is that there is actually color in the black. On the, on the scope, we actually have 
levels. We have numbers to help us help guide us to get to the right spot. But the important thing is that the black levels also have color in them. So if we switch our scopes to, this is a vector scope, and I'm just going to, even though my iris is closed, I'm going to raise the black level a little bit. You can see that this black actually is gray. Uh, and that's okay. That's what we want. We want a balanced black. But sometimes, depending on the lighting situation, you can have a very blue black. And then you actually see the black point in the vector scope has drifted towards the blue sector. Or you can have a very reddy kind of black. So y your blacks can be very wrong, even if they're set right to the right level. Now you see the background, all the color and everything looks wrong compared to the other cameras because the black level's wrong. Yeah. Right? So are we going to show how to do it properly? Yeah, absolutely. So first, first step here in this case is, again, you bring it back down to black. And I like to have it just a little bit higher so I can kind of really see that dot. Sometimes it's hard to see the dot. And you just adjust how much red and blue until you come to the right spot where the, the point in the center is even. You want to exaggerate the black level so you can really see where the color is. Now you yeah. can see the screen again actually looks gray once more. So then back to the waveform monitor, which is this other monitor. Now I'm going to set my black level just a little bit above zero. So like I'm trying to hit maybe two IRE, three IRE with that black level. And then I can bring the iris up again. And I don't want to have those peaks pass uh, the 100 mark. Now, we also have other technology like knees and thing in the CCU. And, and yeah, what that yeah. means is it will take those peaks and flatten them. We, yeah, we actually have a pro camp here as well. So mm. whatever, if, even if we are a little uh, lower and a little above, it mm -hmm. still cuts it. So that when we transfer over to our mass control, we're not overexposed mm -hmm. to there either. So no. All right, back to this though. So now we've finished the black balance. And now the big thing would be to ask Jake downstairs if he wouldn't mind grabbing a white card or a white reflector. Yeah, put the reflector up, Jake, please. Yeah. We got our white card in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just need to make sure that the cameraman pulls the focus all the way out downstairs because then that gives you the best blend of mixed yeah. light. Yeah. And then it'll give you the most accurate... Uh, yeah. Yeah, at least that's what I've been taught. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it I, works. I, I take my teacher's word for it. It's, I've done it for 15 years now, so <laughs> and my white balance is pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, so here we go. When it, comes to, when it comes to doing the white balance, much like when you do the black balance, you want to get that light line all the way up close to 100. Yeah. The, the further up you go, the more it will always look white. The brighter yeah, your camera is. Exactly. It's going to be uh, absolute white. Absolute white, yeah. So you don't want to go all the way up to 100, but pretty pretty close up there, maybe well, 90. 97 or 97, something. 97, just as we get to that peak yeah. mark. And you can see here that my white looks blue. So all I'm going to do here is now that I have my so IRE scope, level, yeah. I'm going to go back to my vector scope. And look, you can see the, the dot is in the blue quadrant here. So now with the white levels, I'm going to move blue back to center and then I'm going to add red to get back up to the top and I'm going to move it back over. There's a trick to when I do this with the multi camera. Sometimes I use split screen on the mixer board. Yeah. At like a, a split transition. So oftentimes I'll do I'll do this split screen when I'm trying to match the cameras and then really see where I'm at. So you can see those look pretty close together. So if Jake takes away the uh, white card now yeah, and sits I back in the camera too. Now you can see his exposure is a little better. I still think that there's a little bit of bright spots right there. I can just adjust down for that just a little bit. But now my color should be more correct in this. So in a nutshell, IRE, Institute of Radio Engineers unit yeah. is what uh, radio engineers for light. I didn't understand, but whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, it predates us. Yeah. But th those are the units that you use to understand the uh, 
waveform. Uh, but Jake overall looks right now, and the waveform helps you get the color right. Mm -hmm. The same principles apply when you do in editing software. Yeah. Right? So we're going to jump down with Jake down into the studio, and actually our, our tech tip studio, not this lovely uh, coffee set. And, and we'll actually show you how that works downstairs. So here we are in the studio with uh, Jake. And you guys can see, this is one of these extra scopes that you can actually take with you if you're doing field productions that has uh, the waveform yes. and the vector scope with it. Yes, vector scope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, don't have this, I don't have this camera fired up, but so you know, in this one, I can set my black level, I can set my IRE, I can even set a warning called zebras to be able to tell me when I'm close to the, the top end. Yeah, you just set whatever it's supposed to warn you so you have your reference point. Right. In general, you want to have your face exposed at around 75 IRE. Yeah, somewhere right? under. Uh, so if you, set your, if you set your IRE to zebra at something like 80 or 85, yeah. then you'll start to see little lines where the bright spots are. So many people have different ways that they like to do this, but I like to have it so it's set so when I just, just open the iris up just a little bit, you just start to see lines here and here. Yeah. And that tells me I'm right in the right spot for my exposure. Yeah, exactly. You don't want zebras all over your background and everything that you're totally right? overexposed. Uh, and it's kind of, I, it, peaking in the DSLRs is for focus. I don't know if you can actually peak for iris levels in the DSLRs. I don't think so. But there's zebras in this. I put this one on. There you go. Uh, so you see here, it's all these little lines, like a lion and a zebra. It's white or zebras. So this is a white background, which means it's always over. It's limit. over what you set the IRE on. Yes, and I believe I put it at 80. Right. So in general, you want, again, your, your white to come up pretty close to 100 IRE. Yes. And your black pretty close to black, uh, zero, yes. but not quite all the way there. The DSLRs, the mirrorless cameras, the Canons, I find when they when they show you when you record they actually crush all the colors the information is there but when I put it in you can see in Jake's scope from Final Cut but also in this scope you can actually see that they're just taking up the middle part of the of the well the, the vector scope no the waveform and you can see that the colors aren't really I think they're good the Canon colors are good but they're not as good as they could be and if you look at the scope, you can actually see that the, the blacks are a little higher and they don't come up to uh, the full IRE in the whites. Now, again, to get your exposure on your face, for a face to look right, it has to be up there by 75 IRE. Yeah. So, Jake, show us how to fix that. All right. Let's just go With back the here. scopes. With the scopes. All right, there are scopes. Then we have to go into your actual editing side. All right, so here's your exposure controls. So what we're going to do is take our main and pull it up a bit. Up here somewhere is where you want the face to be. Right. But you can't leave it like this because now the blacks are way, way off. So you have to pull the blacks down after. We'll pull the blacks way down there to right above mm -hmm. zero again. Yeah. And then depending on the picture, you might find that there's a highlight that's still too bright for you. Not so much in this one. But I'd actually drag the midtones up a little tiny bit more. I, I'll put the mid there you go. But we also see that we are above 100 on the, the top side. So you can either draw the highlights down, or if you're really happy with your exposure, you can use broadcast safe software. Yeah. Under color, and then it's just broadcast safe. You pull it over there, and then uh, it cut the tops. So that's the exposure side, Jake. What about the color side? When you're setting the color balance, you don't do what we do in the broadcast. You don't take a white and try to draw the dots back into the center of the vector scope. No, that would be way too many buttons on a camera. So how do you use? Do you, do you try to gauge based on the skin tone? Uh, usually I go by what's the most important in the screen, which is usually the face. Mm. Uh, and then the background becomes the background. Yeah. This is the guideline for your face is this little line here. Yes. After you set the exposure, you can actually go in and put something in called color wheels, which helps you 
do uh, the shadows and the highlights and the separately. Right. So you can color if there's if there's a little bit too much blue in the blacks, for example. Yeah, and that would be called shadows and the. Shadows and blacks are the same thing, it's just different words. Right, so a little bit different than when we do in broadcast, but essentially we're doing the same thing. Yeah, you, right? you correct your blacks, you correct your, your whites, and then yeah. you correct everything in between. So guys, again, make sure that you're actually getting the most out of your camera and expanding that. So your white levels are hitting broadcast white, and your black levels are at broadcast black. So right above zero on the IRE, uh, for the black and right below 100 for the white. And then you want to try to get your face so it falls somewhere in and around 75. You'll get more sharpness from your picture, more color from your picture. There's more vibrance in the shot. Yeah. And you'll find that you have to do a lot less color correcting if your waveform is right. Oh, so much less. Right? You have so much more information to work with than if everything is crushed black or... No, exactly. Or if you've been sitting there looking at your, your footage and, and you're going, I, I'm doing everything I can to try to sharpen it. I'm trying to get the, the black to look right. I'm trying to look make this red look right. Yeah. Maybe it is that your IRE just isn't set properly. Yeah, because if you keep adding uh, soft or sharpen, it adds black to the picture, which affects your lower blacks. So you kind of end up in a vicious loop if you do it that way. Yeah. So listen, I know that there are some of you out there who probably know this a lot better than we do. Uh, we weren't going for the most academic description, but we wanted to help people understand at least uh, better how and why these things are important. Exactly. Thanks so much for watching with us. We really enjoy having you. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Tech Tips. See ya.